So it's getting to be that time of year again. No, I don't mean time to plant, I mean time to wait. Every time at this year we find ourselves playing the waiting game, and this year absolutely is no exception. We look at the weather forecast, we have cold days, we have rainy days. Everything just continues to build on our anxiety to actually get out to the field and go try things. And we know that the best of intentions fall by the wayside on that first day of planning. So imagine this, if you will. It's 46 degrees outside. We had a rain two days ago and the soil's just starting to dry out, but the sun's out. It's April 22nd and we haven't planted a kernel of seed yet. We're getting nervous. We know that it's a little cool. We know that the weather forecast that we're looking at isn't quite right, but doggone it, the sun's out. I think I'm just gonna get the planter out and go try it today. So we load things up and we go out with the intention of just planting a few acres to make sure the bugs are worked out everything. And by the time night comes around, we've planted 200 acres. I'm Keith Byerly, Precision Ag Manager at Central Valley Ag, and this is your agronomy focus video that corresponds with my article on the CVA blog site. While there's nothing wrong with getting a good day of planting in, imagine how much different we'd approach planting season if on that first day, we really stuck to a goal of only planting 40 acres. If we did that 40 acres and we checked each one of the things on our planter as we went through, what would our confidence level be when we went to bed that night on the first day, knowing that we'd given everything a good check and that the planter absolutely was ready to go versus finding something out on day number two or number three that we probably should have caught earlier on in the process. So today, I wanna to give you some things that I think you need to be checking on that first day as we go out and try to get 40 acres done. And so let's start right away with our row unit. I think it's always a good idea on day number one to grab some rope, grab some straps, and tie our closing wheels up on the planter. That way you don't have to dig for seed. To me, finding seed in a seed trench is a little bit like trying to hunt mushrooms. Some people have an innate ability to find that seed down in the trench and others are on the struggle bus all day long. Tying that seed closer up eliminates that problem and it lets us quickly find seed and move on to the next piece of what we've got going on on that planter. The next piece I want you to focus on are these parallel arms. I know that I preach this message every year, but I continue to see this be a problem on far too many planters. We wanna see our parallel arms looking like this when we're out in the field, parallel to the ground, not a slant down, not a slant up, because anytime that we have slants in these parallel arms, what we're doing is, is we're changing where our weight is being transferred to that row, whether it's down on our closing wheels, whether it's up on our double disc row openers or somewhere in between, depth gets affected by these parallel arms not being properly level with the ground. And that depth effect turns into germination and emergence issues and ultimately means we don't have the consistency of stand that leads to our best profitability. So once you've taken care of those two issues, you made sure that the seed's being dropped at the right depth, you made sure that your parallel arms are running at the right angle, then you can move on to things like your downforce system. Making sure that you're carrying adequate amounts of gauge wheel load to maintain 100% ground contract while not creating sidewall smearing and too much weight on those rows. Those are things that require getting out of the cabin digging as well as looking at what's going on on your monitor. Then finally, when all of those things are done, you can begin to put the focus in the cab on your seed display, whether it's a 2020, an ag leader, or your OEM monitor that's in the cab. You can really begin to focus on what those bars on that graph are telling you. Are they dancing around? Are they staying the same? Is one row consistently lower? Things like that monitor can help us find problems with bad chains that have a little rust on them and aren't coming around quite right, or cable drives that have a little bit of a hitch and aren't aligned properly and are causing a skip and a jump as they come around. So that's the message that I want you to take home today. Think about a small day on that first day and really dedicate yourself to getting out and digging in the field and making sure things are right. But don't just go out there blind this season.